Hi everybody, it's Nikki here and welcome to a bookish video. So today's video is my June wrap up. This is where I talk about all the books that I read in June. So let's get started with um, my stats. Um, I did do um, Bookgammon in June, obviously, it's my game. Um, uh, but I also took part in Whatever You Want-a-thon, um, which is a readathon that was hosted by Maddie's book browsing blog, I think it's called. Um, I will link that uh, her channel in the description box down below for you. Um, the only problem was I read the books <laughs> and then thought that it was a Friday and it wasn't, it was Saturday and it was the end of the readathon and I missed out logging my points. So that happened, um, but I did read. So uh, the total number of books that I read in June was eight. It was a very slow reading month, but I was reading a lot of big books. You will see that from the next stat, which is the total pages of, or physical pages that I read. Okay, so the total number of pages of physical books that I read uh, was 2,876. That's a lot of pages. Um, and the total audio hours of books that I own was 54 hours and 45 minutes. That was only over two books. <laughs> that was two books. So you can tell the length of the books that I was reading. Um, total audio hours of books that I don't own was zero because I didn't uh, listen to any uh, books on audio um, that I didn't own, hence the zero. Um, okay, so star ratings. I gave two books five stars. I gave four books four stars. I gave two books three stars. I gave no books two stars and no books one stars but I did DNF two books. Uh, the genres of the books I read, I read no thrillers, uh, no classics, no non-fiction, no manga or graphic novels. I read one contemporary, one middle grade and six fantasy. I was on a real fantasy kick. I was on the Epic and High team for the Whatever You Wanted On, hence the big books of fantasy because that's what epic and high means um the origin of the books that i read two were borrowed and six were owned and um the format of the books that i read i read six physically and two audibly that's what i mean T two books over 54 hours um the binding of the books that I read, uh, four were hardback and four were paperback, um, so that's that. And the genders, three were male and five were female. So those are all of the stats. So let's now go into the actual books that I read. Um, let's have a look. Okay, so there were two books on my TBR that I didn't actually get to. Um, the first one of those, I'm actually about halfway through. Well, just less than halfway through. And that was The Bat by Joe Nesbo. Now, the reason why <sighs> this is kind of mushed over onto my July TBR, not that I need any more books on my July TBR, um, it's because I've done this before. I left it right until the last moment, started it at the end of the month, got about the same way through, didn't finish it during the month, didn't finish it within the first week of the next month. So it must be something about this book that just isn't gripping me and making me want to read it. Now you could say, well, Nicola, DNF, I'm not afraid to DNF, that's, sure, that's for sure. But I, I, I kind of do want to read it. Um, it is kind of interesting. I have got a little bit further this time than I got the last time I did this. Um, and I do want to finish it. So 
I'm going to try and, and finish it during July, but it's not a top priority. If I haven't finished it by the end of July, then I will DNF it and uh, probably unhaul it um, because if I'm giving myself this chance and I still don't take it, there's an obvious reason. So um, this is carrying over into July. So that was The Bat by Joe Nesbo. Um, but the other book that I sadly didn't get to and I really, really wanted to was my reread of The Exact Opposite of OK by Laura Stephen. If you don't know, this was my favourite book of 2019. This is actually my third copy of the book. Um, but the fifth copy that I physically bought. Uh, I sadly didn't get to this, but <laughs> I am so wanting to read it. Um, but what I might do is, because I do want to kind of annotate through this, I might start it in this month, July, um, and just take my time going slowly through it, a couple of pages at a time, annotating, making notes, doing scribbles and stuff, um, which I don't normally like to do with my books, but as this is a second copy of a book that I love, uh, I don't mind doing that. But I wouldn't do it with my signed copy, that is for sure. Um, so, yeah. Uh, I probably will get to this eventually, um, but I'm just going to take it slowly, I think. So those were the two books that I didn't get to or haven't finished. Let's talk about my DNFs. So the first one that I DNFed was The Perks of Being a Wallflower by Stephen Chbosky. Now, this was... This was such a quick DNF. I think I didn't even get past the first 15 pages. But the problem that I had with this is at the beginning of June, I was craving fantastical worlds, magic, uh, good versus evil. You know, I was craving epic fantasy uh, because I feel like after May, with my bad mental health month, I just really wanted escapism. And the opening pages of this literally talk about a young kid who uh, who committed suicide. And uh, our main character is kind of dealing with that um, because he was a friend. Um, and I was like, yep, no, <laughs> no, I don't, I don't wanna, no, I don't wanna deal with that. That's too real. It's too much like life for me. Um, not to get too personal, but it's a bit too close to home. So yeah, no, I don't want to, I don't want that. So I DNF'd it very, very quickly. Just wasn't the right time to be reading this. I don't know if I will ever pick it up. I don't know. Um, I might put it back on my shelves for now and maybe see maybe later. Uh, in the year when my mental health is maybe um, a lot stronger and I maybe want some like contemporary um, but for now this is a, a DNF and the other DNF was sadly our book club pick uh, so me and a couple of ladies uh, who used to attend our local Waterstones book club um, we meet every month um, they kindly invited me um, to join them um, a few months back and we've been meeting up every month or we've been like having like zoom meetings or google dingy meetings um, online but for the last two months we've been able to meet up physically because of restrictions lifting um, and this month or the month of june our book club pick was attachments by rainbow rowell <sighs> this is a contemporary and this is basically office chit chat, gossip, talk and look, even when I worked in an office, I never got involved with that, you know, water cooler gossip kind of thing, as I call it. But the problem was, was it's Rainbow Rowell and I love her pumpkin heads graphic novel. And so I wanted to love this because I love that graphic novel so much. Um, but sadly, this was a no from me. Okay, so let's get on. So the next one, ugh, 
I'm going to talk about this big beast because then I can put it down as well. Uh, so this is The Complete Chronicles of Narnia by C.S. Lewis. This is all seven books in The Chronicles of Narnia. And me and my good friend Charlotte uh, chose to read all seven books in the month of June for our buddy read. Are we crazy? Yes, we are. But it was done. I did it. The whole thing was done. The reason why I wanted to do all seven books is because this is one entire book. And what I didn't want to have is that confusion of how do I put it in my uh, in my bullet journal if I only read half of the book, say. Um, so yeah, we read the whole Complete Chronicles. Luckily for Charlotte, she'd already read the first two, I think, in the Chronicles of Narnia or the first three so it wasn't such a massive thing for her but um we both still took the whole month almost to read all seven books but we got it done this i listened to on audio um, because all seven books are available on scribd so i was able to listen to those um on audio uh, rather than having to hold this behemoth of a book um so yes i read this I um on my notes uh for the the magician's nephew which is the first book I said that it gives good info on the birth of Narnia but it's a very simple story. On the Lion the Witch and the Wardrobe which is the second book uh I said simpler storytelling than the movies a bit sexist in the comments from Santa. Um so yeah, the movie, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe, kind of adds more detail to the, to all of these stories. Um, and there was a comment from Santa when he's giving the gifts to the children. Um, and he literally says to Lucy that the reason why he's giving her that potion that helps to heal um, p wounded people is because girls don't belong on a battlefield. <laughs> his thoughts would not sit well today um but yes that was a comment that was made and i obviously made a note of that for book three the horse and his boy i said interesting to see other lands outside narnia uh this had a persian or arabian kind of um feel to it and uh this happens during the reign of king peter for Prince Caspian, my note is just simply not like the film. <laughs> um, Voyage of the Dawn Treader, which is book five. Uh, I put bigger range of characters, more world explained. Caspian is a bit snivelling and has tantrums. So yeah, I felt like Caspian in the movies is a lo lot older. I believe Ben Barnes plays him. Um, I'll have to go back and watch those films. Uh, but in the books, he's a bit more snivelly and a bit more whingy and whiny. Um, for the silver chair, I don't happen to have made any notes whatsoever. Um, but I do believe that um, I really enjoyed some of the characters in the silver chair. Puddle Glum. Um, what is the name of the, the, the owl? I can't remember. But um, yeah, I really like that one. Um, however, there was some... Um, fattest comments um when they uh the two children uh come across the giants um there was some derogatory uh words about the fat giant queen um which i didn't appreciate um and then the last book um the last battle i said um it is a product of its time um as there is a instance of um blackening up their faces <laughs> i couldn't believe what i was reading um and um that i felt like narnia at this point was turning into heaven um and then a shock ending um and it wasn't until i actually spoke with one of the ladies from my book club and i was like that ending what how what and she said oh yeah um because c.s lewis is very religious it's all very religious 
in their story and um aslan is like jesus or god you know being resurrected on that stone table table um and i was like oh my god now that you say it yes completely yes it's very religious um very much a product of its time i look the chronicles of narnia and especially the lion the witch on the wardrobe is a massive childhood favorite but actually sitting down and reading the actual books i realized that it's 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 had its time there are a lot better um more inclusive children's books out there that um our children are now being um exposed to i really don't think that the new generation of children specifically needs to read the chronicles of narnia let them watch the movies the movies are fine um but the actual books and some of the things that are said in there are no longer appropriate in today's society they're no longer things that we would accept in our literature today so i do think it has had its time and for that i've given it a three stars because although i did enjoy the nostalgia um i i just don't think that compared to children's books that are being written in today's time that uh, it can compare and, and it shouldn't because it, it was written you know many many years ago um but we have to understand that this compared to today is this has had its time and it it's a it's definitely a product of its time and it hasn't it hasn't aged well shall we say so three stars for the complete chronicles of narnia okay so the next book i read was a library book and this was a discovery of witches by deborah harkness so i ended up buddy reading this again with one of the ladies from my uh, uh from my book club uh we both decided that we were going to read this this month and we decided we would buddy read it together now <laughs> I don't know if she's finished it yet. <laughs> I did, but um, Bex was really struggling. So um, as we were reading this, Bex was pointing out this is very much Twilight, just an adult version of Twilight. Now, I could see some like references, you know, some similarities, um, but I still enjoyed this. Um, what did I say about it? I said uh, that it's biology and history heavy, um, interesting magic and good family bonds and friendships. So yeah, there's very much um, biology and um, and uh, history involved in this. So as a history buff myself, that really kept me reading with this. And luckily, I was able to sort of skim the biology, which confused me a little because, you know, me and science, we know that's not a thing um, for me. Um, but yes, the, it was the history part of this that really kept me reading it. And um, the fact that we were buddy reading it, um, that really kind of drove me. But I did enjoy it and I gave it a three stars. Um, I would say it's the sciencey bits that really pulled it back for me because I just I just didn't get some of it um, and that sort of twilight kind of similarity kind of pulled it back a bit as well. So it is a vampire story, yes, and I did like um, what was happening and I will probably continue the series but I will just read them through my library. I won't be wanting my own copies of these books so yeah i'm probably gonna read the second book soon i don't know when but i will pick it up so that's that one the book i read was blood and honey by shelby mahuran this is the second book to serpent and dove and this is the fair elite special edition um so what was my notes on this uh, rocky relationships great new characters exciting ending to get excited about book number three yes i remember liking about this it's been it's been a while and you know me and my memory um was that um there was a lot of kind of where lou is 
is thinking that Reed doesn't quite feel for her the way she feels for him and Reed is feeling exactly the same way. A lot of misconceptions, you know, not talking to each other again. <coughs> Seems to be a trope a lot of writers use. Um, <coughs> and they're out trying to seek uh, people's support while they are trying to take down a bad guy, bad woman in this case, actually. It's not a bad guy, it's a bad woman. Um, <coughs> And they are seeking help from different groups, different factions. Um, but the problem is, is these factions all hate each other. And um, so it was really great that we got to see some new characters. We got to see more of the world. We got to see more of these different dynamics between all these different uh, factions. And uh, I think we had werewolves and witches and all sorts of creatures in here. Um, I did really, really enjoy it. And I am excited for book three, which should be coming out at the end of July. Um, and I have it pre-ordered from Fairly, which my good friend Karen reminded me of because um, I'd completely forgot. So thanks, Karen. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I gave this a four stars. I did thoroughly enjoy it, despite my bad memory of not remembering what happened in it. Um, that's my memory, not the book. OK, this next book. Oh, my goodness. <sighs> I read Rule of Wills by Lee Bardugo. Now, if you saw my mid-year freakout tag, you will know that I loved this book. Devoured this. I think I read this in about two days, two, three days. Just, just flew through it. Absolutely flew through it. And it's over 500 pages. Um, so my notes for this was uh, best book so far. Uh, love the political twist. Great ending so yeah out of all of the Grishaverse books the first original trilogy the Shadow and Bone trilogy um, and then the Six of Crows duology and now the King of Scars duology I thought that this was the best book I just loved the dynamics of the characters in here and all of the political intrigue and all the twists and how things were working out and there was just some there was just some great points where I was like oh my god did not see that was going to happen I loved it I devoured this book I could not put this book down I read nothing else normally normally I'll have like two three books on the go at the same time and I'll pick up different books during the day depending on what I fancy while I was reading this, I read nothing else for those two days that I was devouring this. I, I, I absolutely just adored this duology. I think it is the best out of all three parts of the Grishaverse series so far. Um, and, and you can fight me on that because I know a lot of people like the Six of Crows duology. But this, this, this is, this is brilliant. This is my girl Nina. And I love Nina. So you are a massive fan of Nina as well and you want more of her you've got to get to the King of Scars and Rule of Wolves duology because it is fantastic and yeah just I, I loved it so give it a chance so no surprises I gave it five stars after all that like raving about it five stars chef's kiss best book of the month the next book I read was another hardback, and that was The Hobbit by J.R.R. R. Tolkien. Uh, so this is my lovely hardback uh, copy um, that I treated myself to. So what did I say about this? I said amazing characters and world building. It's Tolkien, obviously. Um, I wanted more details, though, um, and I can see how the films managed to stretch The Hobbit into three uh, different films, because I always wondered about that. I always thought, ah, how did they stretch The Hobbit into three films? Um, I, I mean, you know, the Lord of the Rings trilogy was in three films, but how did they stretch this small book into three films? And I see now how they did that, because obviously it's it's been 20 years since I've read this. So my memory about the book and the details of the book were a little hazy, even though I remember loving that world, that that 
that fantasy world. Um, but the details were a bit hazy, so I couldn't remember or think how they could stretch it into three films. But once reading it, yes, I feel like what the films did was took the essence of The Hobbit and they built on it. They gave me the details that I felt was kind of missing in the book. Um, but I mean, it is meant to be a children's book, so it is it is a simplified epic fantasy. Um, but yeah, I absolutely love this uh, so, so much. Um, I gave it a four stars. As I said, the world building, the characters, everything about it was just top notch. It's just, I wanted, I wanted something more. I feel like nowadays with our fantasy that is being written today, we're getting those details. We're getting that world building. We're getting, we're getting more from our fantasy now. And so we've kind of been spoiled. So when we come back to some of the classics, which, which were a bit more simpler in their time, I feel like they're lacking. Whereas, you know, in its time it was epic and amazing and wonderful but we we know there's more out there and yeah um so yeah i loved it really really loved it and i cannot wait to get on to the fellowship of the ring anybody fancy buddy reading it with me uh in the month of august uh let me know in the description box down below if you would like to buddy read with me the fellowship of the ring let me know uh but yeah i gave this four stars the next book I read was such a surprise, such a shock. I honestly thought I could possibly DNF this. And that was If I Had Your Face by Francis Char. Now, the reason why I thought I might DNF it is because it's a contemporary. But, oh my goodness, this, this took me by surprise. Um... This is a kind of slice of life. Nothing epic happens, nothing dramatic happens. There are a couple of moments of brutality. So do be aware of that. But okay, so I put surprisingly interesting despite no drama and no climax to the ending. It's just four women's slice of life. But yeah, it's a slice of life for four women living in South Korea and working in the room salons and things like that and everything on paper says I shouldn't enjoy this but I was entranced by it by these four women's lives I kind of I almost wish there was a sequel so I could learn more about them and get to to know more of their lives I just I, I want more <laughs> um so I gave this four stars it was such a shock and a surprise because I honestly, I, I didn't expect to love this so much. Uh, the next book I read was the next book in the Vampire Academy series by Rochelle Mead, and that is Blood Promise. So this is book four. Uh, my notes on this says that it happens away from the school uh, and she has, um, our main character, Rose, has now gone to Russia and Siberia and we see more of the Strigoys and meet the alchemists. Mm, if that hasn't got you intrigued, I don't know what will. Um, and I said there's good fight scenes as well. So yeah, we have uh, come away from the Vampire Academy in this book and Rose is off on a personal mission. Um, and uh, yeah, we get to see more of the Strigoi vampires in this one. We've uh, been mainly sticking with the... Uh, the m m m m m the Strigoi and the Moroi. Uh, we've mainly been sticking with the Moroi vampires in the first three books, and like we've had glimpses of the Strigoi, but in this one we get to know a bit more about the Strigoi's. And ah, oh, do you know the more and more I read this series, the more and more I think I'm thinking I'm going to end up buying my own copies. I I really am. Because I, I'm just falling in love with this series. I really am. I know. I know it's YA, paranormal, vampires. I know it's cheesy. But who doesn't love a bit of cheese? <laughs> uh, 
I'm really, I'm really enjoying this. I might ask for the box set for Christmas. Don't be surprised if that doesn't happen. <laughs> um, if that happens, I, I, I loved it. Uh, I gave it four stars. I cannot wait to carry on, uh, but I need to pay some fines um, on my books first because they're late being returned. Um, so yes, I need to pay some fines first. And then the last book that I read, um, and this sh goes to show you exactly what mood I was in, um, in June, because it's another epic fantasy, I finally read the third book in the Mistborn series, which is The Hero of Ages, written by Brandon Sanderson. I am kind of glad that I finally managed to finish this trilogy because I have been reading this for two years. It's only three books. <laughs> And it took me two years to read it. Um, so I think I read the first book, The Final Empire, in 2019. I reread it again in 2020. Then I read The Well of Ascension in 2020. And now, finally, in 2021, I have finally read The Hero of Ages. Why does three books take me nearly two years to read? It's ridiculous. It really is ridiculous. But yes, I finally finished the first era of the Mistborn series and I loved it. Um, my note says, what an ending. Yes, what an ending. Um, all the threads were tied up. Um, and the author is not afraid to break you. There were moments in this where I was like, no, no, you didn't. You, ju you just did. Um, and I love that. Please, authors, please break me more. I love it. I love when an author is not afraid to hurt you by hurting their characters because it, it, it makes for much better climaxes it makes for much better endings it makes for much better um action and involvement and nobody wins everything you know someone always you know always loses and, and and i like it when you do that to our main characters i like it when we hurt them a little sadistic of me but i do i like it i love it um i gave this five stars i thoroughly enjoyed this um, I believe that The Well of Ascension only got four stars, but The Final Empire got five stars. So it's kind of a four and a half star like trilogy for me. But I absolutely, absolutely love this. Everything you thought you knew, you didn't. You didn't know a bloody thing. Um, and I just, I loved it. <sighs> Look, at some point in the future, I will probably reread the Mistborn trilogy. <laughs> again uh probably a lot closer to each other next time maybe maybe i might do one a month i might do that um in the future because i would like to go back to the beginning and reread again um even though i've already read the final empire twice but it doesn't matter i'll reread it i don't care um because i feel like because i did read it over a period of like two years that some of the details, some of the information I might have missed or not picked up on. Um, and I feel like a reread with them a lot closer together will help me to pick those details out because I feel like I'm, I'm, I am missing parts of this. Um, also as well, I read The Well of Ascension and The Hero of Ages via audiobook um, as well. Um, even though I have the physical copies, I did listen to them on audiobook and I always feel like I miss a few details when I'm listening to audiobooks as well anyway. So I will be rereading these again in the future, not anytime soon, for sure. Um, I have other books I want to get to first. But yeah, I do think that um, the Mistborn series will get a reread again in the future. But it was a five stars from me. So that was it. That was my June wrap up. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. I know it's been a long one, but you know me, I love to waffle. So I will stop waffling now and let you go. And I will speak to you in the next video. Bye.